Pepper and Chris Anstey. So uh, Coach Ian Stacker sticking with the group that's done so well in the last two days. So Dwight, McGregor and Drimmich out of the starting five for when the teams last met. And here is the Argent uh, time team here. So Alberto, number seven, Victoriano wants to watch. Gino Bealy, the number ten, he shot the ball well from uh, beyond the three-point line against Australia in that final warm-up game. So they'll be uh, watching him there. Well, the coach, Julio Lamas, really doesn't use his bench all that much with the, the type of players that he has in Alberto and Victoriano. And Five, the, the point guard, and uh, the backup off the bench has been terrific from uh, him. Second semi-final underway, and Anstey's height wins the ball for Australia. So not jumping the seven-footer. And the defensive job has been Look given out. to Fernandez. There's the little alley-oop that didn't quite work for Sam McKinnon. Well, they go with the same play they started last night, but that was successful last night with Sam McKinnon finding the mark. This time, Brendan Mann got the job on uh, Lucas Victoriano. Good drive from the number eight, Victoriano, but he comes up without any points. Pepper with the rebound. Man, Anstey on the trail. Good running of the floor, Chris Anstey. And he's fouled as well. We'll go to the line for the bonus. This is what got him drafted in the NBA, his ability for a seven-footer to run the floor like this. Great pass from Brendan Mann. He gathers it in, Chris Anstey, a little double pump. Draws the foul, finishes it off, and first blood to Australia in this second semi-final. Gabriel Fernandez called for the foul. Well, I thought the criticism he received after the Turkey game was a little unfair. He virtually just come off the plane from uh, Dallas. He played summer league in the NBA, Chris Anstey, and uh, he could hardly get off the ground. I could have nearly out-jumped him that night, but he's now acclimatized again to home, and he's going to be a big factor here. The three-pointer goes down from... Uh, Paladino, and that levels the scores. Paladino averaging 12 points a game in the tournament, and he is really a tough player in that perimeter. He penetrates well, very strong. Traher gets it to McKinnon, who's fouled. Victoriano called for it. Barry Barnes looking on. So first foul there to Lucas Victoriano, and uh, from an Argentine's point of view, that's one player you do not want to see in foul trouble. Well, a very man polished. Who played under Barry Barnes in Atlanta, Sam McKinnon. The future of Australian basketball, the future senior captain. Well, a lot of raps on this man. Future NBA, they say a lot. The U.S. colleges want him. But Traher gets the rebound and, uh, well, with one extra man on the uh, key, Argentina should get that ball. But Australia playing with determination, a determination we didn't see earlier in the championships. McKinnon baseline wants to give it to Pepper. Ooh. He snaps it home. Well, the twin towers of Ben Pepper and Chris Anstey. If it's not Anstey, Ben Pepper's making sure he's there. McKinnon looked up, saw Pepper there, took it strong. And Pepper rams it home. Australia three points up. Only two minutes play. Man, out on Victoriano. Paladino Good screen again. for Paladino, and he's a uh, great perimeter shooter. Well, Aaron Traher twice now has got caught out of position off the back screens, and uh, Paladino finding the mark. Anstey to back in on Fernandez. Wheel and deal. Chris Anstey. Oh, Chris Anstey, Barry Barnes saying that's not really the kind of option that he wants Chris Anstey to, to consistently do for Australia at the senior level, but. He's got the feel, and so far, so good. Lucas Victoriano put down by Mann off the ball. Uh, he made it look a lot worse than it was. Great positioning from Anstey to the races. Mann, McKinnon, spots up. Oh, that's... Oh, 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 oh. Mann, last man behind the wheel. And then a foul. Well, last night, Brendan Mann led the charge. Brad McKinnon then came in, and uh, between the two had 25 points in that point guard position. Tonight, Brendan Mann pulls up for the three, finds the mark. 
Australia pressing right from the start. Left on his own. Juno Billy drives all the way home. Three point lead for Australia. Man off the Anstey screen. Tough stuff, Pepper down in the low post against Alberto, number seven. Trahair with 10 seconds on the shot clock needs a bit of help. McKinnon. Man faced by Lucas Victoriano. McKinnon shoots the three with two on the clock. Well, Sam McKinnon, that's an area of his game that is getting better and better with every game. His long range three, the captain nails the three pointer. Consecutive three pointers from Australia give them a six point lead, and away they go. On a two on one, Anstey back nice. to McKinnon. Coast to coast, kicks the pass, he's got the numbers, gives it off to Anstey. Anstey, good shovel pass back. And the two magic teammates know what to do. I don't want eight to be able to just dribble the ball over the center line. Come and challenge him and get it out of his hand, and then you've got to sprint down and match up, all right? You must talk him defensively, they can score it too easily, all right? Get locked into that 2 2 1. Now we've got a foul shot headhunter. Yeah, the foul shot. They're able to go with a big inbounder. Go with the headhunter. Chris, you headhunter. Yeah. Like, Never yeah. really do your head. Guys, yeah. you eat a pretty easy baskets now. I'm getting the defensive staff thinking there's a free throw, but uh, I think it's just ball out of bounds for uh, Argentina. And uh, they're wanting to stick with that two-man zone. Yeah, two -one press. Yeah. 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 They want to stick with that 2-2-1 press, get the ball out of Victoriano's hands because he's the danger man. And uh, But the key is that Zinovoli has uh, has scored and so too has uh, Palladino off the transition. Yes, unchallenged through the lane, both those on layups is Victoriano. Very quick, but Ansi's great hands. He's right up in steals in this tournament. And that's another part to his game that Don Nelson will be enjoying out here. But Ian Stacker more. Victoriano very much the pilot of the Argentine ship. Ginobili, three-pointer. Tough shot there by Ginobili. Three-pointer with Sam McKinnon right there, falling away. Two of two from beyond the arc. Uh, the Argentines. No three-pointers three missed yet in this game. Pepper goes hard. Oh, stuffed back by Anstey. Well, again, Victoriano right there to get the ball up quick with Brendan Mann sticking like glue. Palladino drives on McKinnon. Good help defense. Pepper. He certainly has got uh, plenty of spice about his game here. Well, and the ben ball's Pepper, out of Argentina. Since Ben Pepper has got the nod to start, He's really produced the goods, and uh, the referee changing his signal, saying that Ben Pepper threw the ball out of bounds, so it'll be Argentina's ball. Well, a bit of pressure coming from the Argentine bench there, too. Not saying they paid any part in it. Five minutes gone here. Australia up by seven. Don't leave him alone. Gina Beely, they should have scouted him from that game at MSAC before the tournament started. Well, he has been consistent throughout this tournament. And that's why Argentina is 4-1 and one in the regular, in the rounds, and, uh, of course, winning last night against Lithuania. Three of three, three-point shooting. Traher answers back. Never looked like missing from Australia's best three-point shooter, Aaron Traher. Up by seven, thanks to the Sydney Kings tray. Oh, his Gina Beely again. He had too long a look there, and Anstey gets the rebound. Just froze up on his shot a little bit. Such was the time he had to measure that off. Man, listen to this crowd. We haven't heard that earlier in the championships. Some of the overseas supports taught the Aussies how to barrack. And if this doesn't fire up the Aussie crowd, nothing will. Traher, back-to-back -back threes by the man that won all-star honors. 
as Lucas Victoriano That's is fouled it. on the penetration. But Aaron Traher hits that three. And those two give the stray a 10-point buffer. Very tough foul down the other end. Victoriano totally lost control and just barreled straight into Pepper. But uh, referee Danny Gray saw it the other way. That's in the game for Sanchez, number four. And out goes Ginobili. Brad McKinnon in for uh, Brendan Mann. Lucas Victoriano pulls the trigger. Australia killing them on the defensive glass at the moment. Anstey, look at the pass from the big fella. Traher, triple threes. Not quite. Pepper puts it back. McKinnon battles for the board. Great play from the Crocs. McKinnon out for Traher. In for McKinnon. They're doing it all. Well, Sam McKinnon, good steady play by Australia. Some urgency about Argentina here. In a big hole early, 12 points down. Anstey is giving them nothing. And he thought the ball came off the Argentinian. Well, Leo bulking his way in was Fernandez, as you see. Ball coming off Anstey's hands. Well, I think the replay showed it did touch Fernandez at last. Victoriano, nowhere to go. The big fella there. Nice dish inside. Alberto. Alberto averaging 18 points a game or 17 points at 71% from the field. A broken 8 0 run from the Aussies. Pass just a little bit high into Anstey. 15 seconds on the shot clock. That's Brad McKinnon. The screen from Anstey. Nice little shovel bounce back into Anstey. McKinnon kept it alive for Australia. They're killing them on the glass at the moment. Argentina can't get aboard. Brad McKinnon slips through. Argentina get a stop. Sanchez away to Victoriano. He's their only man at the moment. Out off his foot. Well, the rebound count currently sits at 11 to 2 to Australia. So, with that in mind, just any time a change to the front court that's what's happening any time Argentina does not score they're not getting any second looks at all Leonardo Gutierrez is about to come in for Argentina McKinnon slipped free a little bit there in the low post he's really running around Palladino Palladino looking a little bit weary already there they are face to face McKinnon three rims out and they get the defensive board. That's two stops in a row for Argentina. Sanchez pulled down the board on that occasion. And he slows it down. This is more the style we'll see from Argentina than Australia have had trouble with. This half-court game. Lucas Victoriano has lost a bit of uh, confidence, Bob, with Ansi there clogging up the key. But well, it's some big bodies as Simon Dwight comes in and releases Brent Pepper. Simon Dwight, if he can produce what he did last night, looking good being able to bring on these bodies that are uh, excellent players and not the same for Argentina at the moment Brad McKinnon Australia take the clock down invariably something's opened up offensively Anstey traveling as he tries to back into the big number seven Alberto and the foul called by Miguel Betancourt a designated play there by Australia to get the ball into the post to Anstey and let him operate on Alberto. But Anstey a little too eager and uh, travels. Now, Alberto has been purely defensively orientated so far. They stopped the man driving there. No problems either. Palladino. Dwight's call for it. He thought he got all ball. And looked to be still on it, actually, when Dwight blocked the shot. Well, there wasn't much in that play, but the official uh, blew the whistle. Paladino with uh, five points to his name. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Paladino, 100% free throw shooter in the tournament. That's 11 out of 11. I thought it was a good foul, maybe not. Anstey keeps it alive, in fact, for Argentina. Paladino goes hard at the hole. It's a nice little three-point play there, missing the second free throw. 
The Argentina fans now make a noise, and good hands in there, knocked the ball away from McKinnon. Reaching in, Gutierrez knocking it away from the Australian point guard. And they're getting some stops now, Argentina. Well, they are. Some turnovers coming their way. Uh, Australia just trying to push a little bit too much. In the steady, in the steady basketball. Victoriano. Some of the pressure's been taken off him since Sanchez has come in, the number four. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Down low, Alberto. Reverses in for his first points, if I'm not mistaken. He's been all defensively orientated on Anstey. Alberto there, a very class player. Gets it inside. He's the one that killed Australia in the uh, regular round. Seven-point comeback from Argentina. Within five now. Trahan. No look dish to Dwight. First shot is good. Good penetration by Aaron Traher. Victoriano dangerous out on this wing. Halfway through the first half, a quarter gone of the second semi-final. Australia have been in front since the jump. Victoriano, the lob to Alberto. Little lean from Anstey helped him take it out of court. Well, he got a lot, of, little bit of a dodge down low as uh, Frank Grimmix comes in and replaces Aaron Traher who nailed those two threes. Seven point lead to Australia. Ten minutes gone, so a fourth of the way into this second semi-final. Australia shooting at 61% from the field. Argentina 53. Drimic, faced by Victoriano. He has to back off him. Frank Drimic hits down his first shot off the bench. Well, Australia keeps bringing the players in. Simon Dwight, Brad McKinnon. Now Frank Grimmett, Anstey the steal. And he's running the floor, wanting to pass from Grimmett, but he just pulls it up. Yes, probably a good play too, because the Australians, I think, were getting a little bit involved with the emotion coming to them from the fans, and were pushing it just a little bit hard. They're in the driver's seat here. Anstey the big kick. Then he gets a shove from behind, and the call going Australia's way there. Well, Juan Sanchez ran into the pick by Simon, by Chris Anstey, you can see. He just sets the legal screen. Yeah, the official calling uh, after that play. Lob pass into Anstey and uh, the foul there by number 11, Gutierrez. As Argentina goes for the uh, timeout, 29 to 20 to Australia. It'll be Australia's ball. He's going to cross screen and Frank will come off. We get to get our forward entry then, all right? So you two start the cross screen, take it to his side, for three and 33, all right? Um, box five, get that thing and have a look. He was flat hole open at the last time. Yeah. Right. 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 Even five to four for both teams, and uh, the rebound count that's a telling factor 11 to four to Australia. And uh, the steals, not many uh, of those things happening in assists. Let's we'll see if they come up on the board eight to five. Brendan Mann's got four of those, and uh, really that's because Brendan Mann and uh, and also uh, Brad McKinnon are looking to push the ball, but Ian Stacker realizing that Argentina is trying to make it difficult for uh, Australia to enter the ball at the offensive end, so uh, trying to work some tactics out to uh, to cross over underneath, get some leads going so they can get their offense initiated. Australia taking the game by the throat right from the outset. Have a nine-point lead. It was as much as 12, but they've weathered this comeback from Argentina by playing heady basketball, and the men off the bench have come up with a clean shot. Man, back to Dwight. He's 100% from the field. Big Simon is the crowd favourite. The Melbourne boy plays for the Canberra Cannons. Well, Simon Dwight really doing a great job of hitting those jump shots. Not has not been the real number one part of his game. Cut made there by Gutierrez ignored. Alberto wants to do it all, and Anstey is beating him. McKinnon, he's got a chance to go all the way. Anstey won't shoot for three. Well, early in this tournament he was, and that's what got Australia in trouble. So uh, 
passing it up to get the good percentage shot. Dwight not afraid to put it on the floor. Drimmage. Nancy tries to bat it back. Good battling from Dwight, but Argentina come up with it. Pass just a little bit too forward for Palladino, but he then drives in. Nice play. Palladino. Palladino. Good strong body on Palladino. He's got 10 points for the game. That's his average in the tournament so far. Two off his average. McKinnon makes a move on the baseline. McKinnon. This is Brad. Loses his man. Not quite getting the... Uh, Kiss off the glass at the moment. McKinnon, it's two on one Argentina. Nice pass. Made into Gino Bealy. Good running on the floor. Palladino and his fellow forward. For the same scenario that happened in uh, the game on Tuesday, with the fast break opportunities by Argentina, really uh, Australia slow to the mark. The captain takes it upon himself to make something happen. A foul called on Palladino. And uh, neither team really in team foul trouble at this stage. Four on Argentina, three on Australia. Ben Melbourne to come in. Brendan Mann for Australia. Anstey sits down. As does McKinnon Brad. And uh, after setting the, that pick, Anstey on the number four, Sanchez. Sanchez, a bit of a flop to try and make the most of it, hoping uh, a legal screen would be called. He's hurt his back and has had to get treatment on the bench there's a foul called on Gutierrez Gutierrez uh, Simon Dwight just slipping that screen getting inside position on the out of bounds play and uh, he'll go to the line for two as Australia keeps the fresh bodies coming in Brendan Mann back on Ben Melmoth back in or in for the first time the ball and Australia back out to Simon Dwight so far in this game Australia back out to nine points in front they continue to press oh that was right in front of the referee a shot under the jaw of man from Lucas Victoriano they're going into Alberto over the top of Dwight and the Aussie will be very happy to see him busy he's been shooting at 71 percent before this game He's been a very consistent performer, but uh, Lucas Victoriano getting away with one on Brendan Mann, the tough little nugget from Canberra. To his teammate of the Cannons, Dwight McKinnon. Melbourne sets the screen for him. Great ball handling from Sam McKinnon. Dwight not quite continuing on with the uh, shooting accuracy he started with. This fella's been dangerous, Palladino. Gino Bealy. Drimich. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Gino Bealy to take old Melbourth here. Down low, illegal screen, Victoriano. Well, I missed the first one. That was the referee. Gray didn't call uh, the first one, but Bettencourt got that, that one. Well, he was setting that call up. Brendan Mann just hugging, knowing down here on the right of your screen that Victoriano's trying to come out. You'll see, bang, just the right forearm sends Brendan Mann down to the floor and uh, picked up for that one. Second foul on Victoriano, the Premier Point guard and on-court general. 16 fouls. Well, Juan Sanchez, I interviewed him a couple of nights ago after the game and uh, a real tough competitor. He plays uh, collegiate ball in the United States and uh, he loves to play out here. Man is his man right now. The two number fours. Five and three quarter minutes to go in the first half. It's been all Australia. And again, man. this is where it's tough for the Australians to get the ball in to their offensive set. There's a foul against Gina Bealy. Pushing in on Drimic. Good call from Danny Gray, even though Argentina don't like it. Argentina's definitely take a, a notch up in their defensive intensity, as you see here. Drimic down low, trying Just to get position. position. And uh, Gina Bealy comes around. They're all over Traher, but he weaves his way through like a hot knife through butter. Couldn't quite found his teammate, but it's out of Argentina with 25 seconds still on the shot clock. What can Australia do from the inbounds? They've usually managed to get it 
to somebody down low. Had to go high that time. Well, maybe Argentina were hard done by there. It's come off an Argentinian hand of Berto, according to the referee. Melbourne looked to have a lot of it. Well, trying to get the ball in bounds is uh, the Australians. Julio uh, Lamas likes to tell the scorer's bench what to do. It's all a bit of an act just to try and change the tempo of the game. Dwight off the dribble. Well, Simon Dwight showing he can do it posted. He can do it off the drive and dish and cut, and he can drive to that shot. Simon Dwight, eight points. Sanchez, Alberto has not been oh. a factor yet, but oh, the Australian defense is asleep. Gutierrez on the easy basket. Well, mix up in the defensive set there with the two uh, Australians. Man. Under five minutes to go in the first half. Drimic has been busy off the bench. Melba looking for his first points. Slipped out of his hands. He needs a towel to get the perspiration off. I don't know that Alberto touched it. No, I think it just came out of his hands uh, as he went up for the jump shot. No complaints from anybody. Argentina done well to keep Australia's lead under double figures. Dwight made the man change his shot, but he's got it back, Palladino. That's where Dwight is so good, his athleticism defensively. Well, he makes you think about driving to the basket. There's no question there. Traher called for the foul on Gina Bealy. Just the fourth team foul on Australia. About to bring back two of their starters. Ian Stacker sends Anstey back in. And Sam McKinnon. Melbourth gave the starting centre a good break. And Frank Grimmich played some good minutes. Got uh, two points. Sanchez now, Look right out. the point. Well read by Sam McKinnon. His anticipation just as good as anybody in this tournament. Well, Sam McKinnon very good at the backdoor cut. Paladino trying to match it and almost getting away with it. Man trying to get around the big body of Ortiz. Four minutes to, from halftime. You love to see a player like Brendan Mann on the court. He just gives you a thousand percent. Gina Bealy drives down the lane and gets the roll. They thought it should have uh, been a three-point play, the Argentina bench. Chris Anstey has one foul. Traher, two-pointer, misses. And, oh, man, tried to pull out, but fouling. Well, probably Paladino. a good foul because uh, Argentina had a couple of players on the break numbers down and uh, Brendan Mann there with the foul probably held up proceedings the way it should have been. Plenty of atmosphere here in the tennis center. The Argentina fans. Oh, a little bit free with his uh, elbows there. Ortiz as the three-pointer misses from Gino Bealy. And Australia not giving Argentina very many second shots at all in this first half. Sanchez steals it away. Gino Bealy in front. Nice little bounce. The reverse is classic basketball. Paladino, the fast break from Argentina, gets it within five. Well, Argentina, a couple of quick breaks, a couple of inside shots. Turnovers to Australia. Dwight, the two, right on the three-point line. Has this man got the range tonight? Well, Simon Dwight, his tenth point of the game, as you see, his foot just on the line. But just like last night, he's got the field. Well, he got benched for the entire game a few nights ago against Spain. And that hasn't done any harm at all. Gina Bealy misses from long range. Two scoring from the bench. Aaron Traher, a wide open three. McKinnon from behind keeps it alive for Australia. McKinnon goes hard. No foul there on the number 11, Gutierrez. Great right play, Anstey. On the pine like a gun. A seven-footer gets the crowd to their feet. The crowd goes crazy. Chris Anstey giving everything. Man gives it to him. How he'd like to go for this one. Another wheel and deal. Foul. He'll go to the line. No, maybe not 
quite. He was starting to get into his shot. Well, Argentina has a foul count anyway. So it'll be two from the line, but Chris Anstey doing everything for his country. Medino, two fouls. Out goes Gutierrez. Well, just a little bit of a foul. So Prince Anstey to the line for two. What brilliant hustle from the big man, though. His first two free throws for uh, for the half or for the game. 65% from the strike in Oz 97. He's not doing anything wrong, though, in this game. There you go. 213 centimetres. And the confidence is right up to that last centimetre at the moment. Sanchez looking to get away from the trap. Just a blocking foul up to fight. Well, Simon's right there, just out of position, trying to get the double and get the ball out of Sanchez's hands, as you see. He sticks the leg out, gets the foul, but uh, with Australia only at six fouls, yet to uh, put Argentina on the line. Even so, Australia would want to stop here and make sure they can perhaps get a double-figure lead at half-time. This bike's been good driving in Palladino. Well, without Palladino and his 14 points, Argentina would really be in trouble. He's been the glue factor as far as Argentina is concerned. Inside the last 90 seconds, McKinnon cuts. Anstey wants to take it to the number five. And his magic teammate impassively chewing on there, but inside he would be delighted with what the big fella's doing. Well, he's seen Chris Anstey do that numerous times, I'm sure, in practice, but the jump hook coming from Chris Anstey. Gina Bealy, out beyond the three-point line, and Traher's going to make sure he doesn't get any free shots. Sanchez does and gets it. From the three-point arc there, 50%, four of eight. Australia, 50%, three of six, so nothing in that stat. Australia with 30 seconds to go. They need to take it to Argentina here, get to the line if nothing opens up in the lane. Anstey being buffeted backwards there by Fernandez. Perhaps an ill-advised shot with just 20 seconds left in the half. Well, they had 33 on the clock and uh, really wanted to work it down, but Chris Anstey pulled the quick trigger. So Argentina now has the last shot opportunity, and they're looking for their three-point shooter, Navalo. Sanchez shoots it all air. So one and a half seconds from the inbounds. Watch Aaron Traher over the corner. Gina Bealy comes up on him. Brad McKinnon's going to have to launch it. He's fouled. No, it's a travel. Won't make any difference. McKinnon can't believe the call. It's half time. Simon Dwight's having something to say. And so is Gabriel Fernandez. And Bruce Palmer, sit down. The Australian system coach. Well, Bruce Palmer not happy with the, uh, the last play. It was 40 to 35 a couple of nights ago. 35 this time round. Everything else is pretty line ball. Argentina one of two from the line, but they've only taken two. And uh, and I think really that there's not much in the game, as you can see by the statistics, except for the rebound count. And uh, everything else is pretty even. The uh, scoring, Paladino, as we said at uh, about the five minute mark uh, left in the first half, if he didn't have uh, the hot hand, they'd really be in trouble. Ginobili with Pepper in the uh, second half. He's forced his way back into the starting lineup, the number nine. Ortiz got his hand to it. It's two on one now. The love for Chris Anstey, just a bit long from Sam McKinnon. And he has to pull it back out again. And, well, he thought it came off an Argentinian. So did I, actually. Chris Anstey losing possession. Would have been nice to start the second half with a score, obviously. You want to score first. So now the defense has to really lock in. Sanchez is... Starting this second half with a bit of a back niggle after he hit the pine pretty hard early on. Ortiz goes in to Fernandez. Ortiz hesitant. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Victoriano, are these his first points of the game? Three seconds on the clock and he pitches it away. Well, still not in sync, but uh, 
Victoriano has really been a class act in this tournament to date. Busman, Sanchez steals it from him. Argentina on the board first in the second half. 45 Again. seconds played with uh, no score and just took his eyes off it and Sanchez pounced. He scores off turnovers. Yeah. Argentina 12 to Australia 4. Well, that, that is a telling factor, but the persistence of uh, Sanchez picks Brendan Mann as uh, si Sam McKinnon called for the foul, so things not starting well here for Australia in this second half. Great contrast with the way they got out of the blocks in the first half. In less than four minutes, Australia are up 15-7. And they led 25-13. Argentina came back. Victoriano still pointless in the game. Anstey the rebound. But Argentina would have been buoyed at halftime by the fact that they got it down under double figures. Anstey setting a pick for McKinnon. Now trying to muscle his way into the low post on Fernandez. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Good play Ortiz down low there, stopping McKinnon on the baseline. Now is the bit of blood on Leandro Palladino. He's going to need some attention. A scratch. So they're going to uh, have to bring on Gabriel, or rather Emmanuel uh, Gino Bealy. Uh, Australia couldn't get it to the baseline and find anybody open earlier in the tournament. That was the problem they had with Argentina and all the teams that played a zone on them. Argentina can cut the lead to just three points. And they do. Victoriano, the finger roll, his first points. And the crowd now need to support Australia. Sanchez trying to put the pressure on man. Traher, Victoriano all over him. Argentina is really doing a good job defensively here. Dwight kicks it away. Looking for a call from the official rather than just playing on and uh, that's restricting Australia's uh, game plan at the moment. Ortiz, two on two, the reject from Dwight. That'll get the crowd back into it. Especially if they can score off it. Simon Dwight, he uh, got his dander up from that last call, and there's a foul. Ansi trying to back in on Fernandez, and he picks up his second personal. Ansi's such a big, wide body, as you can see, he's just trying to establish position, and uh, Fernandez from uh, Argentina throws him out of the way. Dwight from the three-point line again, came off the iron hard, which was good, man got the rebound. McKinnon being kept quiet at the moment. Gina Beely doing a good job. Dwight breezes in. Can't get his own board though. Not enough elevation on the shot. Gina Beely. Victoriano wants the three. It's a block. Oh! Looked like a charge. Was man's feet set? Well, the crowd definitely lets them know when they think the Argentine fans are very happy. As you see, Gina Beely. feet set wide then tried to bring them together and I think that's what did him in so to the line Emmanuel Dinabili Argentina's free throw shooting has deserted them here in the semi-finals it's dropped from 67% to 33 Dinabili feels the pressure Traher Good transition D there from Argentina and really throws it away, Anstey. Traher takes on Victoriano, gets the foul. Now, Victoriano foul. not really happy with the call. Maybe what he said to him before the game started at halftime isn't what the referee wanted to hear. As you can see here. So Dwight sitting down and McKinnon. Victoriano, three fouls and three points. Australia calling Matt Nielsen into action for the first time in the game. Here he is with the ball, the number seven. Drimich came off the bench for McKinnon. Traher gets Gina Beely in the air, goes hard at it, but couldn't bank it in. Australia, pointless. 
in three and a half minutes of basketball. Gina Beely, three. And Argentina takes the lead for the first time in a long, long time. And the momentum. Seven nothing to start the half. Argentina. Drimic the lob to Anstey. Some good defense being played on him by Fernandez here. And he forces the ball away. Sanchez on a two and one. Not a good pass to Victoriano. Trajer swats it back, but Argentina get a new 30 second shot clock. Drimic has got to get right in Gina Beely's pocket here. The number 10 for the Argentina fans, and there are a number of them. Eight meter effort goes astray from uh, Victoriano. Well, I guess he's trying to ride the wave of emotion, but not a good shot. Well, he thought uh, he had the feel. He can hit that shot, obviously, but uh, a little long on the mark that time. Australia, four and a half minutes without a point. Can Nelly Nielsen give it to them? He can. The running jump hook. Well, Matt Nielsen shows some emotion. The youngster from Sydney. He puts Australia back in the lead. Gina Beely from behind the backboard. The block from Nielsen. And the crowd are absolutely roaring here in the tennis centre. Oh, he's mugged. Man gets mugged. Referee Brendan Gore has no option but to call the third foul. Well, it was a late call. Brendan Mann crosses over. Prize there's a foul there. Another foul from behind with Gina Beely. And the official there makes the call. Scott McGregor into the game for the first time. Drimic told to boo that ball. I think it was Bill Palmer, chief exec of the NBL. He's riding every one of these shots. Man can't make it. There's a foul on Drimic. Gina Beely pushed him. And uh, that's the third on Gina Beely. Well, the Australian uh, offensive flow just a little stagnant at the moment. A lot of dribbling, not as much hard cutting action going on. Drimic gets held from Gina Beely. Doesn't matter. Matty Nielsen off the bench. The Australian bench players have come up big here when it counted. And they've pulled Australia back to the lead. Nielsen makes the interception. They're going to try and stop Drimic. They lead on him. Gina Beely on three fouls. Well, Matt Nielsen, Coach uh, Ian Stacker, looking for someone. And Matt Nielsen delivering. Man. Well, he's expecting Nelly to move to the line. He didn't. Just hung back there. Not quite reading their thoughts there. So McGregor has uh, come into the game for Australia on Fernandez to give Anstey a rest. There's the foul there. On oh, man, calls Coach Stacker. There's a foul down low. Called on Fernandez. And Scotty McGregor's got the body to match it with Fernandez. Well, Fernandez trying to uh, hold Aaron Traher up so that Ginobili can get out. You see there he's moving sideways. The referee right on the spot to make the call. Australia's ball. He got a ball game. Australia through. Matt Nielsen has scored the last four points. Man draws the defense. Drimic three-pointer. Drained in a big way. Well, Frank Drimic has been struggling from the perimeter. No better time to hit the three than that one there. Drimic four of 17 from three-point land before that one. Foul this time on Nielsen. The big body of Fernandez. And the official saying, if you're going to call it way. one way... Oh. Yes, it's called on Fernandez. And Matty Nielsen charged up down there in the low post. You can see Bruce Barso gets the call. Things going Australia's way. Bruce Palmer got off the bench and said he hooked him, he hooked him. And that's the way it was called, eventually. Well, the motion charge scene here with Matt Nielsen giving everything, every five he could to uh, his bench support players. Argentina goes for the timeout. 16 fouls for Argentina with only uh, six minutes into this half. I want to look at the elbow injuries of motion. All you guys have to do is just don't worry about screening, but start down on the lower part. When you get eye contact, you work the elbow. All right? Start in a stack down low. Wing bleed up. Most men are just spread up wide against the target there. Hard backs all cut. Get the hand 
an opportunity, all right? In the motion, all right? So you guys can step outside of the motion and we can post you if that's Coach Ian Stacker, as you were looking at Lamas from Argentina. Very steady customer. He, uh, he was the same way last night against Lithuania. But Ian Stacker looking to make sure that the offensive sets of the Australians are a lot more uh, intense. I think every time out I've heard Ian Stacker talk about these elbow entries. What does that mean? Well, they're having trouble getting the ball initiated from the guard to the forward to get their offensive flow set. And Argentina is doing a very good job of denying the entry. So an elbow entry is uh, the type of cut that he's designed for uh, for the Australian team. They go all over Nielsen. He'll take it back at him. <laughs> he nearly got his own rebound too. He's a feisty cup swimmer. Victoriano goes coast to coast. He goes sliding down courtesy of Mann. And Mann looking to sit on him down there to get him. Stopping getting back up, and he couldn't get received the pass. Well, Paladino takes the ball to the middle, tries to find a target. The only one that was available was the score bench, and that's not one he wanted to give it to. He just saw White over there on the side with Bruce Palmer. Well, they're putting their bodies on the line here, the Australians. And Matt Nielsen, great example of that there in that last replay. And Australia being outscored 7 nothing to start the half have scored the next seven themselves. So we're back to the half-time deficit of six. Scotty McGregor passes up the shot. Man, back to Traher for three. five three-point shooting from Aaron Traher who won a place in the all-star five at that under 20 tournament in Greece there's a foul called on Scott McGregor 13 foul to Australia six to Argentina 12 22 on this clock in this all-important second half Victoriano has not been a factor yet in this game. This man has. Palladino misses, though, in the second half, where he hasn't scored a point as yet. Well, Matty Nielsen doing a good job giving valuable minutes to Australia. And dry in the mouth is Julio Lamas, who's usually as cool as a cucumber. He's hydrating himself there on the bench now, probably because he does so much talking to the score bench. Big picks being set by the Australians. Great handling from Mann. That looked like a turnover for sure. A charge call. Well, Brendan Mann goes a little too far with the penetration. Argentina getting position. Draws the charge, and it will be Argentina's ball. As you can see here, number 14, Palladino. Argentina looking to take the momentum away from Australia, who are on a 10-0 run. And uh, minutes have just flown by. <laughs> There's only 11.15 to go in the game. Ball's inside. Ortiz has had a shocker, really. Well, Alberto is uh, he's trying to get into, into the rhythm. They're trying now to go inside to him, trying to get uh, Alberto posted up. One of their gun players. Australia making an adjustment with Aaron Traher to bring the ball up instead of uh, Brad McKinnon. Let's see if uh, someone else can have Sanchez wear him down. Nielsen, Brad McKinnon, trying to slip clear of Victoriano. Traher could have given the ball off to him. McGregor, Argentina desperately looking for a stop. Looks after it well, Nielsen. Drimic drains another one. Two-pointer this time. Back to an 11 point lead. Well, good job by Australia to stop the transition. That's what they gave up in that first half to let Argentina back into the game. Alberto, very hesitant, has lost McGregor. Great help coming from Nielsen. He thought it was a clean block. A little nod and a smile coming from Tony Rollinson. Well, an 8 0 run by Australia to take that lead up to. Uh, nine points and inside goes Alberto really not much in that the referee blows the whistle Alberto to the line for two local 
from free throw shooting from Argentina when it's counted. And Alberto, he likes to get his points within close. Only 55% from the line in this tournament, so I won't mind fouling him, Australia. 11-point lead. First seven points of the half belong to Argentina. The next 11 to Australia. Drimic. Alberto does a good job stopping him taking the shot. Traher goes hard. Foul called on Palladino. That's his third. And that is the sixth, seventh team foul on Argentina, so they can't afford any more with ten and a half minutes to go. Nielsen's looked after the ball very well under a lot of pressure. I oh, got bumped there. Could have been a travel, but... Uh... Referee said play on. He's had to catch a few wild and woolly passes as well. Look at the confidence though. A great pressure by Drimic Argentina. For three. Got that time. Victoriano. Australia have pressed all game. Well, Argentina very quick as Alberto gets inside on the break. Matty Nielsen lets him get inside position there. So the 11 nothing run broken by Alberto and Sanchez on the fast break. Traher. He goes at Sanchez and the foul coming in on the weak side there. Well, just like last night in the game against the USA, Aaron Traher only has... Uh, how many points does he have in the game? Nine points to the game, but he's such a player that you have to watch. Every time he comes off that double screen, you can see all five Argentina players focused on where he is and that uh, really frees up some of the other players well Australia can win this game from the line certainly they will if they can continue shooting at 86 percent well Pete I think you better be quiet well Traher he only gets points from three-point land <laughs> these are too close Australia equal their biggest lead of the game. 12 points. Sanchez does well, and the lane opens up for him. And once again, the Australian defense really a little slack there. Penetration. Juan Sanchez doing a great job of pounding. And another steal. More points off turnovers. Sanchez just sweating all over. Brad McKinnon who needs to get his chin up. Can't blame the officials on this. He's got to get his head up, as you said, to get that ball into play. Six point game, as it was at half time. For Argentina on a similar run to the one that stayed at the half. Nielsen draws the defensive heat. Dump to McGregor, who's fouled. Alberto, I think. No, it's called on Sanchez. Australia with 16 turnovers. Coach Ian Stacker wouldn't be happy with that. Brad McKinnon out. Matt Nilsson gets a really rousing reception from the fans. And Aaron Traher takes a breather for the first time in the game. McKinnon, Anstey, and of course Brendan Mann back in the game. Roberto in fact called for that foul. One. Newcastle forward, determined to make up for it. Argentina slowing the tempo right down. Kinnon comes out on Sanchez. Gina Bealy. Sanchez for three. No rebound is there. Drimic. Man, back out, running the point. Eight and a half minutes to go. Australia lead it by seven. McKinnon hasn't really been an offensive factor and two combined there to steal it from him. Great hustle from Anstey, forcing Argentina to throw it out of court. Well, surely. Argentina's ball, I think they thought an Australian had touched it. Gutierrez looked to just shovel it straight out. I don't think Anstey had a hand on that. Well, both officials saying to me and Stacker, stay in your box. Sanchez certainly looking dangerous. Got nine points. Victoriano has been quiet, but he's hit two three-pointers. 
And that one gets the Argentina fans on their feet. Four points the difference. Now, Victoriano, we said at halftime, without a score to his name, is the danger man. Drimmick. Good cut, good execution there offensively, but here comes Victoriano. Consecutive trays from Lucas Victoriano. And he pumps the air, he loves it. So they get one point closer on that exchange of baskets. Man, McGregor. Nowhere to go. Now the travel to Scott McGregor. Well, Magoo has turned the ball over twice now. And I think we're going to see Phil Doherty into the game for the first time. So uh, all the Australians have seen court time. Gina Bealy, the home fans call for some defense. And McGregor out there on the three-point line, trying to uh, stop Victoriano. Big pick set for Victoriano. Drivich battles well on the glass, but they come up with it. Argentina, crucial period of the game, under seven minutes to go. A three-pointer would level it for Argentina. Man well aware of that, Sanchez. Guarded by McKinnon. Gina Bealy levels it. Well, Argentina playing with all the enthusiasm of a World Championship semi-final. Sport at the top level doesn't get any better than this. Argentina came out with a run. Australia hit back with 11-0. Argentina have come back and man takes the bit between his teeth and goes to the line for two free throws. And Victoriano picks up his fourth foul. Pat Gordy in for Scott McGregor. Brendan Mann to the line to shoot two. This is great basketball action. Scotty McGregor. Regrouping. Aaron Traher waiting to come back into the game. Brendan Mann. How's he handle the pressure? Ice in his veins. That man's got a bit of pressure, and it's because he's got no more fouls to give up. Man makes both. Traher is going to come in for Brendan Mann. So Australia's backcourt is McKinnon and Traher. Up front, Drimich and Doherty in the middle. Anstey. Australia lead by two. Gina Bealy. Victoriano looking to give it inside to Alberto. Anstey. Let's see how playing summer league in the NBA has helped his defense. Alberto backed away from him and knocked it down. Well, that's the play that Alberto was so tough on in that game on Tuesday night. Scores level again. Argentina got the lead back momentarily early on in this half. Australia got it straight back. It's level now at 59 apiece. Look at Phil Doherty dribbling the ball around. Traher. Four seconds on the clock. With one second to go, this is from four and a half metres. Alberto sits Victoriano away. Two on one. Gina Bealy stuffs it. Argentina in front. A great transition there from Argentina. Australia forced to take the poor percentage shot. And a two-point lead. I just think they've made a bit of a mistake in their backcourt rotation here. They're really having trouble adjusting. We've got a big lineup out there. Drimich gives it to Doherty, gives up the first shot, then gives the ball away. Well, five minutes on the clock. Mann and Dwight waiting to check back in. Argentina now. Of a weathered, an 11-0 run from Australia that might well have put the game away. Victoriano fouled by Drimich. 
And again, Australia still not in the foul count by 16 fouls. Brendan Mann back in. Simon Dwight back in. Probably listen to you, Peter. Well, Mann, after hitting those two free throws, got taken out straight away, which is a bit hard to fathom. Gina Billy, shot blocked by McKinnon. Three on two, Anstey. Oh, no. He should have gone all the way to the hole. Well, the retrospect the scope is a beautiful thing, but Chris Anstey will be wishing he had his druthers. He could have only got fouled. Well, he probably thought someone was coming out of the corner of his eye. Ball inside to Roberto. This is danger. Lock shot to Anstey. I don't know if he didn't catch his arm, but anyway, down low, he's battling with Alberto. 3.49 and clutch time's come early, Bob. Well, they sure do. Every possession's going to be vital now. Both ends of the court for both teams. Australia having to come from three points down. Dwight, well, lucky. McKinnon. McKinnon's first points of the half. He goes to double figures with 10. Dwight's got 10. Traher's got 10. Man knocking it away from Gina Bealy. Illegally shoved him in the back. Man. Brendan Mann there. That's four fouls on the Australian starting point guard. That's his fifth foul. Brad McKinnon, the alternate point guard. And just have a look at Ian Stacker, if we can. He had the replacement for man. McKinnon by the uniform, getting right in his face and saying, Brad, I believe in you. You can do it. McKinnon putting the pressure on Sanchez and well, forcing Sanchez it into the back to Australia for the whole game. McKinnon just returning the favor. Same play. Victoriano! Is he coming up big when required? Australia can't panic. Victoriano, 11 points in the second half. Three three-pointers. Traher from eight and a half metres. Well, they can't panic, Bob. There's still plenty of time, two and a half minutes. Traher wanted to level it up in one fell swoop. But they're having trouble getting inside. McKinnon, Victoriano has to let him go. Alberto blocked it back to Trent. Oh! Good decision by Brad McKinnon. He gets the ball to his money man, Eric Maher. Time ball game, two minutes. This is all about getting the ball to Victoriano. I've heard full houses here at the tennis centre not making as much noise as this. Great pressure from McKinnon, and then Anthony gets the loose ball. A little 1% stuff that might be the difference here between going straight through to the gold medal game, or perhaps overtime, or having to play off for bronze. McKinnon, the captain. Anstey from about five metres. Dwight tries to keep it alive, but good boxing out from Gutierrez. Australia being reduced for it all. Australia being reduced to the perimeter sh shooting now. Another stop. Great play, Victoriano. Gutierrez. Oh, Alberto ends the block from Anstey with a stop. What a stick back. And Stacker wants a timeout. A minute to go. Australia down by two. Point turnaround since half time. There's a foul, Gina Bealy. That's his fourth. And to the line, Sam McKinnon, whose free throw shooting is not really a strength, but it has improved over the last few months. And again, Ian Stacker cancels his timeout. McKinnon to the line for two, captain of the Australian junior team. Makes both, and it's a tied ball game. Dwight saying 
So respective captains have missed their last two free throws. Dwight from downtown. 